Dodge, known for their full-size Ram pickup truck, put the industry on notice when they introduced the world's very first mid-size pickup in 1987 called Dakota. Now, that vehicle was bigger than the compact offerings from many of the import manufacturers, and it found a marketplace. It kind of is like the Three Bears truck, just the right size. Right, Goldilocks? I'm not blonde, Zach. You have your moments. Dakota's been around for over 20 years now, and as the compact trucks from Toyota and Nissan are getting bigger, the Dakota doesn't have that just right market to itself anymore. And as gas prices are starting to go up, a lot of people are staying away from the full-size pickup trucks. So a truck of this size might just be the way to go. When the 2005 or third generation Dakota arrived, I thought Dodge had missed the mark with awkward looking front styling. The bumper looked too low and the Dakota missed some of that Dodge toughness found in the Ram. Front styling is a huge improvement with new rectangular headlights, front grille, bumper and hood. There were three trim levels to choose from, the ST, SXT and SLT. All three can be ordered with extended cab or crew cab, two or four wheel drive. The ST is only available with the base V6, but the SXT and SLT can be ordered with a V8. The length of the bed will vary depending on the size of the cab that you get. Now, many of the new full-size trucks have a tailgate assist, which helps to make the tailgate easier to lift or close, but not the Dakota. Prices for a Dakota can vary widely depending on the cab, engine, and other options, but expect to pay between $25,000 to $35,000 for a Dakota. To get a full list of features and specs, go to our website and look them up. While you're at our website, you should look up the review we did a couple of years ago when the 2005 Dakota came out. And when you look at the inside of that one and this one, not a lot has changed. They've come up with a newer center pod here, but there really isn't much to look at. Sure, it's a work truck and you expect it to be simple in here, but there's a lot of cheap looking plastic that's kind of overwhelming. The inside really is dull. Well, the back seat is roomy enough. Just remember, you're going to be giving something up if you don't get the big boy Ram. Now, Zach forgot to mention there's an auxiliary jack and there's optional heated front seats. I do agree with him, though. The interior is a bit on the plain side. Dodge gives buyers what the import trucks just don't offer, and that's muscle. Okay, the 3.7 liter V6 that's found in the base Dakota isn't as powerful as, say, the Toyota Tacoma and Nissan Frontier's 4 liter V6s, but what they don't have is a V8. The V6 has 210 horsepower and 235 pound-feet of torque, but the 4.7 liter V8 has 290 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. The base transmission is a six-speed manual or optional four-speed automatic. I suspect that most buyers will be impressed with the optional V8's power, but will go for the smaller V6 in order to save at the pumps. Over the years, I've had a chance to drive the Dakota, and every single time I get in it, I always like it, especially when you get the crew cab, the four-door version we have here, because it really does make sense for a lot of people. It is the Goldilocks truck. Not too big, not too small, just right. Recently, we had a chance to drive the Mazda B-Series pickup truck, which is the same as the Ford Ranger, and that vehicle is so squished and small. This vehicle really is a good compromise. It has, obviously, the work capability, especially when you get the V8 engine, but it also has the the maneuverability if you have to use it in the city and I think as gas prices go up and people are rethinking the full-size option something like this makes sense with the v6 you can tow up to 3150 pounds if you go for the v8 you can tow up to 7050 pounds the Tacoma and Frontier do come with five-speed automatic transmissions the four-speed idea is a bit dated that being said, this unit is capable, but we found downshifts a bit slow in passing. Most people don't think of safety with pickup trucks. The Dakota has optional side curtain airbags, but no side airbags. ABS is standard, but there's no traction or stability control. And with an empty bed, traction can be challenging. The Dakota is a very flexible vehicle. If you're looking for a truck that you can use on weekends to haul stuff around or carry a lot of cargo, then it's got enough power and enough space to do that. But it's also a great vehicle if you need to drive it to work every day. It's very capable and comfortable. 
Well, Lacey, the Dakota really set the trend in the mid-sized market, but is it a leader? Well, you know what, Zach? I've said it before that I'm not really into trucks, even though I'm from Alberta. But I'm really not into the full-size trucks. I live in the city, so they're just too big. So a big point for me that I really like about the Dakota is the size. It's a lot more usable. I also really like the fact that you've got the choice of two engine options, and I like the exterior styling. However, on the downside, I'm not too crazy about the interior. It's a bit plain looking, and I wish they would have had a tailgate assist because it's actually really hard to put up, and it makes that horrible noise when you try to put it down. Well, I'm going to agree with a lot of these things. First of all, the styling on the outside, the model when it came out in 2005, I thought was a dud. It just looked weak from the front, and styling, as you mentioned, Lacey, does count for a lot in the pickup truck world. Also, the interior size, and we're talking about the overall length of the vehicle and the size for parking, what have you, but I found the interior size is just right. It's good for a family if they have kids in the back or if you're using it for work, it's a very useful size. On the downside for me, it really surrounds, again, the, I like the size of the interior, but it's the finish of the interior, the inexpensive plastic and way too much of it. It doesn't really compete with the import trucks that are now getting bigger and competing with this vehicle. Also, when you talk about, say, the Tacoma from Toyota, the Frontier from Nissan, or even the Ridgeline from Honda, they just have a more quality, refined feel, and this truck feels a little bit crude. They had an opportunity to update this truck more than they could have. It just feels like it's just warmed over from what we've had in the past. You know what, Zach? I've been doing it a lot today, and I hate to do it, but I agree with you. It kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It really, really does. For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com.